Hi, um, we're going to present our interna international health project. Uh, our project is on reducing water disease in Ethiopia with Emma King, myself, Fernando Bello, and Linda Lund. Going to open up a PowerPoint presentation with our Okay. Is that a lot of Ethiopians lack access of clean water, according to the World Health Organization. Seventy-two percent of lack access to improved sanitation, and there have been many efforts from many organizations around the world to help Ethiopians have access to reliable sources of clean water. Uh, Many of these sources are contaminated. Uh, to access that water, many people travel many distances, especially women and children that spend six hours traveling to find water. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the effects of unsanitary water in Ethiopia are many, especially health. There are three types of water diseases in Ethiopia water wash diseases, water-based diseases, water-borne diseases. Uh, water wash diseases uh, originate from a uh, lacking of personal hygiene. The most common disease in this category is Shigella, which could also cause dysteria, scabies, leprosy, trachoma, skin infections, and ulcers. Waterborne diseases involve diseases that come from consuming animal and human waste contaminated water, typhoid, cholera, hepatitis, dysteria, and diarrheal diseases are part of this category. According to Rebecca Shore from the Water Project website, waterborne illness such as cholera or diarrhea are the leading causes of death in children under five years old in Ethiopia. Water based is comprise of diseases spread by living organisms in water and <clears throat> there are many parasitic diseases like worms that contaminate the water sources and <clears throat> according to the CDC that's the daily parasitic disease in the world is known to potentially lead to kidney failure liver failure or bladder cancer and kills over 200,000 Africans each year. <clears throat> well, I give a brief description of the problem. Uh, the time, more time may, may mean less poverty, more education and more empowerment for the people of Ethiopia. Poverty. In Africa alone, women spend 40 billion hours a year walking for water, access to clean water keeps communities more time to grow food, earn income, and go to school, but we fight poverty. Ethiopia is one of the poorest countries in the world, and they lack some of life's necessities. Education. Clean water helps keep children in school, less time collecting water, means more time in class. Many children spend up to six hours during drought going to collect water and this means children are missing school. Education is an effective way to help these children change their circumstances. Power for women. Women are responsible for 72% of the water collected in, in Africa. When a community gets water, women are able to help their families and give their children the opportunity to go to school and get an education. Not having to worry about collecting water gives these women an opportunity to be more self-reliant and encouraged to make changes in their lives. They start businesses, improve their homes, and take charge of their own futures. Clean water and proper toilets help keep access to clean water and improve their way of life. Lack of government help. The government has been chaos for many years due to problems in the government. Has caused lack of control of their military and their military has destroyed marketplaces and crops. 
farms are market places employs many people and by destroying their places to work causes a loss of employment which is needed to sustain a way of life for the people of Ethiopia. Well, <clears throat> give a brief overview of the intervention. There are many organizations that are making efforts to bring sanitary water closest to the people. Our goal is to minimize water disease through education and providing disease, detecting resources to help Ethiopians identify and prevent water diseases. Our methods are aimed to help individuals feel more self-reliant in these efforts. Our interventions has three parts, education, resources, and self-reliance. An assessment, the Somalian or Median and Afar regions of Ethiopia are some of the poorest areas in the country. We have assessed that these areas are the most in need of water, health, education, and prevention measures because they do not have the means to access medications for water diseases. While they are currently on undergoing a drought and even civil unrest in some areas, their options of water sources are limited. Many do not have the luxury of sanitary water sources. With our education program, they can know how to sanitize water they can collect, as well as learn how to practice sanitary disposal of fences that will minimize water diseases in their area. Education is a necessary part of our program to help solve the problem of unsafe drinking water. It provides a basis of knowledge that will not only help these Ethiopians understand how, but why prevention measures need to be taken. Our education training will take about a week. We will also join with Water International to provide picture fly flashcards in assisting with our lessons. Interpreters will also be brought to help communicate. <clears throat> in intervention methods. First, we will visit the, with the Ethiopian CDC and other well-known NGOs in the region. Through them, we will learn about the people and make trust connections with local leaders. With this organization, we will analyze and choose a number of small communities which may be the most receptive and safest to teaching. With each community, we will do the following over the course of a week. We will meet with the leader in the area we have selected. We will address, educate, and train them on an overview of water safety and water management. We will also teach them how to recognize symptoms of water disease that are caused by contaminated water. Then we will teach about proper hygiene and how to build a cut hole for human faces disposal, as well as how to properly use or dispose animal faces. To this, we hope to reduce human and animal waste going into main water sources and reduce the spread of water diseases. What makes us different from other programs, leaders will be responsible for taking back the information learned to their own communities. They will teach and train their own communities on the same things they learn and were trained on in the meeting. A volunteer from an organization will assist them for the first month or two in teaching and training the community. These volunteers will also prepare the leaders and other members of the community to become specialized in water education and maintenance in their own community. The goal is to help these specialized leaders and community members to make ownership of the project with their community and help them become self-reliant or aiming to also create connections to other water problems willing to come <clears throat> to implement their interventions. We will be able to introduce problems to those are already specialized in water health and behavior to further lead their communities. For example, one community may not have a well installed in their areas. However, if one is already trained in water safety when another plan wanted to come in and create a well, they will know how they can trust to help maintain and lead the community with this new installation. Again, the people become self-reliant through first learning 
and then teaching one another what they have learned. Resources or intervention is not aimed to create what efforts that have already been created. Many organizations already make significant efforts to educate and bring clean water closer to Ethiopians in need. Rather, we aim to partner with these organizations to help encourage self-reliance as part of the education programs and resources provided to the Ethiopians. After this month of implementation, we will also act as a resource by periodically checking up on participating communities every six months. This should allow communities to practice what they have learned in a self-reliant manner, while also having us as a resource to help them along the way. During our checkups, we will continue to evaluate how the best support these communities and their leaders as they continue with proper water behavior. Self-reliance, as previously mentioned, to help Ethiopians to continue to use these methods of water, high and maintenance, we want to encourage an attitude of self-reliance by putting specialized leaders in charge of education and training their people. They are becoming part of the solution to maintaining a healthy community. Our role is to educate and train leaders in such a way that they feel prepared to educate and train one another. Self-reliance focus on the idea of helping people help themselves. Knowledge will be the powers that enables them to maintain healthier lifestyles. Now my time goes to Emma and she will keep with the presentation. Okay. Our overview lessons, we will teach leaders water safety and water management, water disease symptoms and treatments, human fecal disposal and animal fecal use. Our water safety and water management, um, we felt that there is a need to reduce the disease in water and so we came up with a few ways that that could be done through filtering and boiling water, sun exposure, and how to tell if water is safe through um, boiling the water, and water disease and symptoms and treatments. Most common diseases in Ethiopia result in, from animal and human waste contaminated water, typhoid, cholera, hepatitis, dysentery, and diarrheal diseases, uh, below are the symptoms and treatments for each disease and treatments needed. And below is the typhoid and symptoms that are caused by typhoid and the treatment that is needed. We also have cholera um, with symptoms and treatment. And hepatitis with our symptoms and treatments. We also have hepatitis A and B. Um, and lastly, we have dysentery, or next to dysentery, and lastly, we have diarrheal diseases. Uh, and next is Linda, explaining cat holes. Okay, so as part of um, our lessons that we're teaching, we're not only teaching about diseases and how to manage water, but we are also teaching what they can physically do to um, help prevent um, fecal matter from getting into, um, into water sources. And so for human waste, that way is through cat holes. Um, so through fecal waste, there's good evidence that if um, when humans are using cat holes, they reduce diarrheal disease, um, parasites, um, other types of diseases, water diseases. Um, overall, it's really important um, to show people not only how they can participate, um, um, let's see, so overall, it's not important just to teach about water safety, but how they can participate. Um, and so, like I said earlier, one of those ways is through um, learning um, how to make a cat hole and having leaders teach their own communities about that as well. Um, so what is a cat hole? So a cat hole is a small hole that um, one digs in the ground for their feces. Um, not every environment has the luxury of a latrine. Um, so this is a way that you can safely dig it in the earth and um, 
have it not affect water sources. Um, this prevents also from runoff water from uh, helping it get towards the water source um, if it were to rain. Um, so the way that you do it is you take a small shovel or a trowel um, and you dig about six and six to eight feet or sorry inches deep um, and then about four to six inches um, wide um, and then after you've done your business you take the soil and pack it in on top um, and and that's that um, while we've been um, Doing our project, we also realized that a large um, amount of animal life um, and livestock are used um, by Ethiopians as part of their um, livelihood. And so we wanted to know what we could use um, animal feces for. And we found um, a great article by Salman Zafar um, who said that um, we could use biodigester technology to um, to transform that animal dung into energy. Um, so it says here, livestock, um, this is Salman Zafar, he says, livestock and poultry production are among the main economic activities in rural as well as urban areas of African countries. Um, the livestock sector, um, in, including sheep, goats, camels, these all play an important role. Um, and most of the manure is collected in lagoons or left to decompose in the open, which obviously creates a severe environmental hazard. Um, what's interesting though is that Zafar explains um, below here about how to use that type of technology to transform it um, into something useful. So he says here, anaerobic digestion technologies can help create new renewable energy resources to serve a growing bioeconomy within rural communities. Anaerobic digestion is a controlled biological treatment process that can be substantially reduced that can substantially reduce the impact of livestock manure on air and air, air and water quality. Um, anaerobic digestion um, produces two outputs, um, biogas and digestate. Both can be further processed or utilized to produce secondary outputs. For example, biogas can be used for producing electricity um, and heat um, as a natural gas substitute and also a transportation fuel. Um, the use of these um, anaerobic digestion for animal waste disposal is an attractive way to address environmental problems. Um, so not only would this um, reduce what is being put into the environment, but also be used towards um, something else. Um, so just moving along here, um, why our intervention will solve the problem? We know that education is important. Um, we plan to educate leaders of communities in cleaning and maintenance, proper hygiene, signs and symptoms of disease. And um, part of this is that we aim to better equip them with the knowledge necessary to um, not only be there, but also recognize when problems arise to um, prevent the spread of disease. Um, we plan to include these trainings on cat holes to reduce um, like we said earlier, waste running off into water sources, and we believe education will um, break the cycle of lack of education um, and poverty, um, and ultimately um, clean up the drinking water. Um, that being said, we had a few barriers that we um, thought about as we were trying to create this intervention, and um, a big one was language. Um, we recognized that a lot of us knew English and there's a number of other disease, or not diseases, sorry, languages and, and cultural backgrounds that we wouldn't really be able to relate with as much. Um, so we had that as a, as a, you know, a, a barrier. We also had education. A lot of individuals don't know how to read or write. Um, and we also wanted to know how we could use funding um, to support our program. Um, so just moving along here. So some solutions that we had to our language and education barriers is um, we wanted to bring, bring in an interpreter. Um, the most direct way we could think of um, sharing that information would be verbal um, interpretation. Um, another thing that we realized was that um, many um, culturally Many of these people are very verbal or like to communicate orally rather than through um, 
through uh, literate materials. Um, and so we've, we've done some research and there's a organization called Living Water International who um, help explain that oral learners communicate through methods such as storytelling, drama, songs, poetry, parables, proverbs, and other oral arts. Ironically, an estimated 90% of the world's workers present health-related topics using literate and not oral communication styles in order to reach communities. Um, so we, was with part of our program, wanted to incorporate more of um, more of the picture um, flashcards that um, Living Water kind of provides with some of their lessons. And so that's why we wanted to partner with them and maybe make it easier for those that we were teaching to understand what we were um, explaining. Um, and our last barrier funding our project. Well, we looked into a few different organizations that could help us with, with our funding. Um, so we found waterproject.org and billion bottle project. Um, and both of these are organizations that help um, bring, uh, help other um, organizations and programs um, get clean water for Africa. Um, so Clean Water Project um, is um, mostly, mostly believes in providing with clean drinking water um, and education and building ways of getting water. Um, Billion Bottle Project is another organization um, that actually uses bottles of water um, to educate others on how to better clean their water um, and and maintain clean water. Um, there's a few grants that we also looked at that could also help us out. There's green grants, li um, livewater.org and charity water. Um, and they also wanna help support those who, who are making efforts to, to help um, individuals who don't have clean water. Um, so other than that, that's the end of our presentation. Um, we appreciate listening. Thanks so much.